Hi everyone, so this is my Unit 1 video response to the interview form, and we're basically asked to just compare the different interview styles that were discussed throughout the, this chapter. So there were four main interview styles that Jarvis discusses in this specific chapter, and the first one's a phone interview. So this is a real interview that is conducted over the phone. Um, a lot of times it can be mistaken for just a casual conversation, but it is most definitely a real interview, and it should be taken very seriously. Um, a lot of times employers might use the phone interview as a screening tactic um, and they sort of just rate your answers amongst other candidates answers and a good phone interview usually leads to an in-person interview so it's very important to take it seriously and be prepared. The next interview style is just one-on-one -on -one. so this is like the most common interview style. This is where the employer just sits down with you and only you and just goes over questions that they might have about you or questions that they have that they want you to answer revolving the specific job description. This is also a good opportunity for you to ask the employer specific questions that you might have just because it's one-on-one -on -one, so it's much more intimate than a phone interview or the other interviews that we'll be discussing. So the next one is a group interview. So this is an interview in which there could possibly be up to 30 to 50 candidates in a room at once speaking to different supervisors. And the book states that it kind of looks like almost a speed dating thing. So that can be very intimidating if you're not prepared for that. Um, so supervisors will usually ask the same or very similar questions to all the candidates. So it's extremely important for you and as a candidate to be extremely creative and original and not to repeat anyone else's answers because they're looking to see who can think quick on their feet, who's creative, and who can sort of step out of their box and into a different comfort zone. So standing apart from the crowd is extremely important in this scenario. So it's just, like I said, very crucial to step out of your box and make yourself known to the supervisors during that big interview because you really have to make yourself stand out when there's that many people. And then the last interview that we discussed in the book was the panel interview. So this is a process in which one person is usually interviewed by three to five supervisors, almost like a board um, from the corporation. And the panel usually has a list of specific questions that they intend on asking the candidate. And it's extremely important to, in this situation, well, it's important to make eye contact in every interview, but in this one, it's extremely important to make each individual supervisor feel like they're included in your answer. So you're not just talking blatantly to five people all at once. It's very important to sort of narrow it down and answer that question as if you're speaking to them directly. And I think what I learned mostly from reading this chapter is that there really is no easy or simple way to interview. I think all interviews can be intimidating if you're not prepared. So it's always important to be prepared. Know the organization, know the names of the supervisors that you might be um, interviewing with, and just be confident in yourself. It's always important to have a strong eye contact, original answers, and just to carry yourself with poise because it's important to do your best to stand out amongst the crowd in every way that you can. Even if you're in a one-on-one -on -one interview, you're still there's still other candidates being interviewed. So it's always important to remember that you need to be confident, you need to be articulate, and you need to know what you're talking about. That way you stand out amongst everyone else and you can hopefully get the job. So that's my response. Thanks, guys.